Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's roundup video of the past weekend. Again, I'm gonna run only through the games um, as I've seen them. There are no predictions this time around for that. I need a little bit more time, especially, especially since we had, um, we have now a midweek uh, round in England um, as well and then in Greece and so on. So it's a little bit going all over the place that I can uh, nicely make predictions uh, in that sense. Um, for once I've chosen ahead of time that I will call this video Dream Debuts and Widening Gaps because to me that's the theme that's overarching this weekend and then I'm wearing a shirt that does not fit really that trend although there was a debut goal scorer in there. I chose Milan sim for the simple fact this is the game this weekend that gave me the most emotion, that made me happiest. Um, but it's only a side note in whatever will happen. So let's run as usual through the leagues and we'll start in La Liga, uh, where Friday uh, evening we had Getafe rolling over Leganes, 3 0 at the half, 3 0 it ends. Alaves beats Levante away from home, and then the big game, Real Madrid Sevilla. I watched that one, um, and I have to say, I mean, it was uh, Real Madrid started out with some chances, but then actually I thought Sevilla was a slightly better team. Sevilla also with new jerseys. I know I keep saying it every weekend, I need to make more jersey review videos because it's really crazy how many jerseys have been released. Real Madrid also released the fourth jersey, but I don't think it will be worn, although who knows. Anyway, Sevilla even takes the lead, but for some inexplicable reason, this lead is ruled out. It would have been Luc de Jong. Honestly, I couldn't understand. I mean, if he would have seen it during the play, I would have said, okay, you missed it. But then to have VAR overturn it, this was not clear, clear and obvious. For me, uh, all the anger that comes from Sevilla to not give this goal is completely justified. So it ends nil-nil at the half. However, Real Madrid comes back and a wonderful combination via Jovic with his back heel and then Casemiro lobs it over the keeper, makes it 1-0 for Madrid. At that point I thought, oh yeah, yeah, this is a typical Real Madrid uh, game where at first uh, they look a little bit shaky, then they make the goal and they will play it home safe. Nope, Sevilla, Luc de Jong makes an equalizer and again, mired in controversy. This time I think the goal should have been chalked off because I hate the rule, but the hand should not be the instrument uh, in scoring and the way they pull things back in England and in Italy, there was clear first the elbow and then it may have been touched the hand, although the player was on the ground. On one side, on the other side, I was relieved that they gave Sevilla that goal. So yeah, it's not all Real Madrid going Real Madrid's favor, but still the first goal. Uh, that only a team like Real Madrid is getting such a call um, at home. And then I thought, yeah, game. Oh, uh, the game is open again, but Casemiro uh, escapes any um, cover. And heads in a fr uh, and, and heads it in freely, makes it two one right thereafter, and then Real Madrid can easily hang on. Actually, we're a little bit closer to the three one, so Real Madrid actually taking the lead at that point. Um, later on, Osasuna Real Valladolid ends in a nil nil. Abar beats Atletico Madrid two nil. Uh, again, a little bit controversy uh, at the beginning because the one nil of Abar was at first not given, then VAR intervenes, and yeah, there was no offside. It, it is worth it. And Atletico Madrid was putrid. There was hardly any chances from them. And in the end, it's a late goal, but nicely taken shot from um, just outside the box. Makes it only for Eber, first win for Eber of Atletico Madrid in the rain. That was another theme that I saw there are many, many rainy pitches, especially in Spain, which didn't make for very, um, how to say, joyful watching. Rain was also in Mallorca, and I only saw the, this was ahead of the Milan game, but I saw the 1 0, and then Mallorca over, ran over Valencia. I think they had a 3 0 lead at halftime. Uh, one of the goals scored by Budimir. I think the best thing about Valencia were the blue jerseys. Other than that, a uh, horrid drawing by Valencia. Um, Ramadan make, makes it even 4-0. Valencia pulls one back. I think Parejo is even sent off. And then uh, late Budimir misses uh, the chance of making a fifth goal. 
But that was a big surprise that Valencia completely uh, flattened. And now they have to play Barcelona, though they will play at home. Uh, a fun game was Real Betis against Real Sociedad. Betis in the first half, clearly the better team. Uh, having good control of, of, of the game and getting two really, really nice goals um, by Iglesias and then Joaquin making it 2 0 at the half. And you thought, ooh, Real Sociedad might be uh, in trouble. I have to say, well, I also like the unusual uh, color, color matchup green and white against the dark blue uh, third jerseys of uh, uh, La Sociedad. was really nice. In the second half, Real Sociedad came back and actually. Um, Bossed the game around, had a huge chance when the Betis keeper uh, cleared the ball. It goes right to uh, the uh, center line where uh, a, a Sociedad player tries to lob it over him into the goal and it bounces ahead of the goal and then up towards the bar. The goalkeeper probably also had the fingers in there. That would have been a great goal. And I think that would have given uh, Sociedad some. Uh, momentum and probably they could have made an, an equalizer but uh, the longer the game went it was clear that uh, Betis is gonna win that one to add a third one in stoppage time through Canales. Espanyol gets a surprising win 2-1 at Villarreal. Didn't see that one but was very surprised about it. I saw the highlights of Athletic Club uh, against Celta Vigo where Bilbao actually should have taken easily the lead they were complete control and then Vigo scores the 1-0 in the second half and in the end you need to be happy that um, they get the equalizer. But I think both uh, sets of teams since the equalizer came late will not be very happy. And then I didn't see it live but I saw the highlights and I read and listened a lot about Barcelona's um, start against Granada, the Kike Setien's first game. And yeah, Barcelona looked like the Barcelona of old again, but I'm not so sure. Um, I'm not yet to uh, praise hallelujah there. They had over a thousand passes and 82% of the ball. This is Barcelona as we would expect it. They had great conquer combinations, but what they didn't have is great goal chances to, to be honest. Actually, the best one came from Granada in the second half. I mean, Granada didn't see much of the ball, didn't have many chances, but the one chance that they had, that should have been a goal. I mean, that was a shot that bounced right off the inside of the post. Barcelona probably were also held by a red card. Um, and, you know, I know it will take some time and it's not an indictment yet on Kike Seatien. I really hope that Barcelona can play attractive possession-based uh, soccer again and show a little bit more punch going forward. And yes, with Ansu Fati, Messi, Griezmann maybe finding a way to uh, move it around, there's a chance there. The goal that they scored was brilliant. Um, I think it was Puig who played it back hill in, then uh, Vidal, he didn't want time it because he needed to make a stop and then back hill it, which was all right. And then Messi in a typical Messi fashion puts it in. Messi could have made a second one, but it was a, a good save from the goalkeeper. So it's only one nil, um, you know. For now, we see something better. Barcelona looks a little bit more like Barcelona again. Um, but I think the gears still have to fit together and probably there needs to be a little bit more punch added on front with Suarez being out. Although you have Lionel Messi who will score goals so maybe you have to just figure out how to uh, have him play off Griezmann and have Ansu Fati in there and should be fine. That win also meant and since Real Madrid only won by one goal against Sevilla, the Barcelona stays top of the table, level on points with Madrid Two goals separate them. Uh, and then Atletico and Sevilla both lost. So this is the first gap that's really widening. I think we can say it's a two-way race. And it will be between those two who will get the title. And might well come down to the head-to-head. -head, um, not in Spain when uh, teams are level. I think it's the head-to-head -head who decides the position. Getafe um, is edging closer to Atletico and Sevilla. Real Sociedad was dealt to blow. Valencia was dealt to blow. Atletico Club was dealt to blow. So, you know, everything kind of falling off and it's really the two big boys separating themselves. Um, when we look down to the, ta uh, the bottom of the table now, um, yeah, it's 
still very much the same uh, teams of Mallorca, Vigo, Leganes and Espanyol. Leganes really, although they had a big turnaround, this showing was not very good. Espanyol is now again in touch with kind of Celta, Vigo and Mallorca, so it remains to be seen. I don't think that an Aber will probably go in there and uh, via the lead, but you know, you never know how it will happen. But definitely interesting times ahead in La Liga and with a Barcelona Real Madrid race, uh, which we which is any anyway what most people would like to see. Let's move to the Premier League where we have a similar uh, fashion. I almost was about to wear a Premier League jersey. Um, Crystal Palace at that one, but more on that in a little bit. I saw highlights, but I cannot really comment much on most of these games, except the ones that I saw, which they actually were uh, three that I saw. Watford Spurs, nil-nil. Watford got a penalty that uh, was saved. There was a huge chance. I think it was just barely um, not over the goal line. I think it was by Spurs. So that is a game that was not your typical nil-nil, but it ended nil-nil. West Ham Everton won one. I think Everton probably had a little bit more of the game, but in the end, West Ham uh, gets the point. Brighton at Aston Villa ends one one. Arsenal uh, against Sheffield United. Um, yes, Arsenal is showing some promise, but in a way, you are tempted to say one one is probably quite okay, all right against Sheffield United, given how well Sheffield United plays. On the other side, if you get a win there, you put yourself back in contention up there. So uh, definitely missed points. Which we can also remind Manchester City. This was a game I watched. Uh, it was at the same time as the Real Madrid Sevilla game. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Manchester City, first of all, being Manchester City. Possession based soccer, having chances. Um, especially in, at the beginning. And then it kind of got a little bit uh, less uh, frantic going forward. Um, and then Crystal Palace uh, takes the lead. Um, I think it was off a corner, corner kick the ball goes to Tosun in the 39th, who puts it into net a little bit out of nowhere, but also not entirely under because they managed to keep it tight and then really get Manchester, hold Manchester City at bay. And same story in the second half. Yes, City were going forward. Yes, uh, they tried to create chances, but for the most time, uh, Palace could keep them at bay. There was a penalty given that fortunately by VAR was an overturn because I don't... Th I think this was a handball that was definitely not intentional. I think we have to go back to that. The handball rule needs to be overlooked again. And then just when I thought that Crystal Palace might actually get a win at City, Aguero within five minutes turns turn, turn, all around the typical Aguero fashion. The first one, a nice crossing that he slides in, and the second one, a great shot of his. Makes it 2-1, and I think, yeah, City... If City would have won, I would have not... couldn't have said that this is un undeserved. However, there's another twist to tell. Suddenly, Palace goes forward again, and Wilfried Zaha on the side puts it across that Fernandinho puts in his own net in the 90th. This time they hang on, it ends 2-2, and the happiest team of them all is, of course, Liverpool. Norwich wins at the bottom of the table clash against Bournemouth, which basically will keep them a little bit more in contention and puts Bournemouth in real trouble. But yeah, a Norwich win was coming, given how they were playing most of the time. So I'm not totally surprised. I was surprised about how the game went at St. Mary's in, uh, when Southampton had a 2-0 lead after half. Wolves tur turns it around. Um, great assist, I think it was on the equalizer for Adama. Uh, they completely uh, dominated Southampton. It was a weird uh, jersey matchup. I really cannot get past those Southampton jerseys. Uh, they, they look crazy. And then, speaking of crazy, crazy was the game Newcastle-Chelsea. This was a game that Chelsea bossed around. They had many chances. Yes, they were maybe not as creative as you want to be, but Newcastle was really only sitting back, defending, hoping for a point. And that's what they seemed they were getting, because as Chelsea was missing chances, I mean, goalkeeper had had, had to save and they were defending well. And then I think a new Newcastle didn't get a corner kick until late in, in, in the game from one of those corner kicks. The ball falls to Hayden after a cross and Newcastle gets the winner with more or less the last kick of the game. That is a good thing loss for Chelsea who continue kind of a little bit squandering form. If Chelsea would 
play up to what everyone would, would expect. Chelsea could well be in second place at the moment, but they still, will, as we'll see, hold a rather comfortable lead in uh, fourth place. Then another surprising result, Leicester gets the lead. Um, and I hate when Leicester plays, plays in the black jerseys. I have to say, I you have white ones. You st oh, no, you have pink ones this season. Uh, it's just, I... I don't like it. I mean, the dark blue and the black, there's not too much difference. I even think they could have played in blue there. But yeah, Leicester does take the lead uh, in this game and looks kind of comfortable But uh, in, in the first half. But then uh, right at the beginning of the second, Wood gets an equalizer. Then Vardy gets a penalty, misses, and Westwood gets the winner late on. That was a surprising result. Anything but surprising was how Liverpool against Man United played, except that I thought the Man United uh, jerseys, yes, that's what they have, look a little, little, a little bit weird in kind of Dortmund colors playing at Liverpool. Liverpool dominated that game uh, in all phases. The only thing they couldn't do is score a goal. They scored one early through uh, Van Dijk. At that point, I actually paused the game, put the girls in the bathtub and uh, went down and thought, oh, there will be more coming. Yeah, Femina would have once one scored, but there was a clear interference with, with, with the goalkeeper and that was a foul when I saw it immediately. I said, this has, has with Jocko. I think there was a second goal that Van Dijk also called off for a similar uh, offense. Liverpool should have led. Actually, uh, United could have gotten an equalizer if they were lucky, but it would not have been deserved. Second half, similar story. I thought that Liverpool will eat United alive, but they just cannot find a breakthrough. And Salah, yeah, can be a little bit frustrating at times watching. And in the end, it gets to the point where <laughs> uh, United actually goes forward and you have to be careful that you don't give up an equalizer. It was a little bit reverse science to the game uh, at Old Trafford where United actually was the better team. The only game that Liverpool did not win this season. And then Liverpool got an equalizer out, out of nowhere and I thought this game might be head headed that way. But uh, uh, in the 90th minute Alisson kicks the ball out, Salah starts in his own half, runs uh, towards tour, goal, makes the 2-0, and who is the first one to celebrate with him? It's Alisson, which was, I think, quite remarkable. And so Liverpool, relatively easy win, although they should have made it uh, much earlier, much more comfortable than it then was. So all of this means we have many draws in this round that Liverpool increases their gap, and they still have a game in hand against um, West Ham United, a game which will happen next uh, Wednesday. Liverpool now having a uh, quick math 12 and 4. It's crazy. 16 point lead. They could make it 19. Um, I think the league, we can safely give it to Liverpool. City and Leicester are relatively close, but I think City will probably end up a comfortable third place, uh, sec second place. Leicester, um, Chelsea, we have to see. If United uh, or Wolves can get something going, they, they might challenge for a fourth or third spot. But at the moment, I still will put my money on Leicester and Chelsea. I don't think that Leicester, Leicester will probably go through a small valley now, but so have been all the other teams. Surprisingly, uh, Spurs... <laughs> he cannot get is uh, treading steadily as his palace and his arsenal. So yeah, with all those draws, Newcastle also seems kind of safe. Um, now, if we look at the bottom, yeah, it gets a little bit. St I think Brighton is probably the first team that's got to be a little bit worried. West Ham with twenty three. Uh, yes, you have a game in hand, but it's against Liverpool, so I don't think you can expect much there. And then Watford, Aston Villa, Bournemouth and Norwich, yeah, the latter two especially look a little bit bad already. Now, Bundesliga was back with a bang. I saw the Friday evening game between Schalke and Gladbach, and after an initial period where Gladbach was better, Schalke actually really bossed the game around, and I have to say it was newly added Austrian Gregoritsch, who was at the center of almost all good movements forward. He had a big chance. I mean, Schalke should have taken a one or if not two goal lead at the halftime. Um, but Gregor also saved a big chance on, on the line from Gladbach. Second half, then Schalke gets the goal. The first one, again, an assist by Gregoric through Serda right after the half. And then he makes uh, a second goal in the 58th and Schalke can play at home quite safely. 
Hoffenheim Frankfurt was a weird game because Frankfurt had better of the first half. They had the one nil lead, um, but Hoffenheim equalizes and actually it looked like that they might turn the game around. And for once they're not watching uh, and are not uh, attentive enough. And Chandler scores and makes it two more Frankfurt and Frankfurt hangs on, which was sorely needed for Frankfurt to get any momentum going. Game of the weekend, bar none, Augsburg, Dortmund. Um, that game, I did not watch. I watched other highlights many, many times. I just saw at the beginning of the um, second half that it was 3-1 Augsburg. I thought, wow, Augsburg is really uh, killing Dortmund's title hopes. Niederlechner in the 34th gave uh, Augsburg a 1-0 lead at a time when Dortmund had many, many chances already, but just couldn't conquer, convert, and then they shoot themselves in the foot by making uh, easy losses. They lost the ball, lose, lose the ball too often in midfield, and uh, that was one that Azar um, had to take. Then a Richter with a great shot right after kick kick of makes it two nil for Augsburg. Brandt puts it back with a nice curling shot, um, and you think, yeah, maybe uh, Dortmund might get something, something. But in the 55th, Niederlechner makes it three one, as I said, and I think at that moment everyone thought Augsburg is going to win this game easily. What does Lucien Favre do? Yeah, we bought this new wonder boy, Holland. I know him well. He played for Salzburg. Um, come on. Within three minutes, he makes a goal. Uh, and it's 2-3 um, uh, from Dortmund's point, point, point of view. And it starts a wave. Dortmund gets sees to have now a threat ahead and rolls forward. Sancho, after a nice assist by Hummels, uh, makes it 3-3. Just two minutes later, Holland was there, but I think it was all right that Sancho... Converted that one. So suddenly it's 3-3 with just the uh, adding a Hall Holland in there. 70th. Holland scores. I mean, it was a nice tip tip. And I think Azar was running there. Uh, he saw the goal's block, gives it to Holland, who can just pull, pull it into net. 4-3 Dortmund, and he adds a third one. A debut in the Bundesliga for Alfred Age. I think he's the second youngest player ever to score a hat trick. Um, also scoring on his debut. I think there were only a very few. Uh, in the top five leagues um, in Europe. It's absolutely amazing. And the guy is only 19 years old. Yes, this is now a day before the ages. It can go all wrong from there on. He's not entirely fit yet, although he claims he is, but you know, he wants to play. Um, I have to say, it was in a way awesome to watch that whatever he has been doing in Austria, he can do it in Germany as well. Um, yes, he plays for Salzburg, a team that I don't like. But it's a little bit of a vindication for the quality of the Austrian league as well. In the bottom of the table clash, no, not exactly, but you know, uh, those teams are far down. Düsseldorf, Bremen. Düsseldorf maybe had more of the game, but Bremen gets the win through an own goal. I mean, if you have, they call it the Keller Derby, this kind of basement derby between two teams that need the win and Bremen need, needed more. That this is decided by an own goal is uh, just speaks volumes. Uh, there was also some contentious scenes at the end when um, a player was sent off, uh, and it was not. And many people were discussing was was the right thing to send uh, the guy off who was um, just discussing with the whereas another one was just yelling and screaming, just some stuff like that. Uh, go watch the highlights; you will see. What is there? Freiburg gets a win at Mainz 2-1. Köln gets a big win 3-1 over Wolfs Wolfsburg. Um, I did not see much of the highlights. I just thought uh, from what the wall they could gather that the first Wolfsburg was better, but Köln was ruthless in front of goal. Leipzig needed a little bit until uh, to, to get going. Union actually took an early lead because um, similar to Dortmund, they were not uh, lost the balls um, very early on the mid midfield in Union. Nicely on the count, counter attack, and Butter uh, gets a 1 0 in the 10th minute, and Leipzig really cannot get, get much going. But then, just need to give them time. Timo Werner with a great shot in the 51st, another really nice goal this weekend, makes it 1 um, 1. Sabitzer then, who has been in great form, makes it 2 1, and Werner adds a third one with a Sabitzer assist. So, those two seemingly are the big boys. At Leipzig at the moment. 
I saw quite some of Hertha against Bayern, where I was hoping that Hertha can steal a real result, but this was a typical game where just Bayern needed to chip away, chip away, chip away. Hertha ultra def def defensive, and you know, once Thomas Müller headed it in, there was only one winner. Lewandowski a Kalkal penalty. That was a really nice goal, I think, by Rafinha, I want to say. Let me check that. Now, Thiago, really nice shot to make it 3 0, and then. Perisic makes it 4 0 very easy and also easy for win for Leverkusen over Paderborn. So, also Leipzig now four points ahead of Bayern. Gladbach dropping, so they also separate themselves a little bit, but I think Bayern is not out of it by any means. Dortmund spectacular, but you do worry about the defensive frailties that they have, and Schalke is level with Dortmund. I think those are the teams that I would say have maybe a say in the. Becoming champions, although the top three I feel a little bit more comfortable, to be honest, it's between Leipzig and Bayern. Um, yeah, so a little bit between Pest and Cholera in many ways. Uh, Leverkusen, Freiburg, Hoffenheim, yeah. Let's uh, go a little a little bit further down. I mean, the relegation zone is kind of wide. I think that Frankfurt is not entirely out of it, but Union Köln in there, Hertha below Union, that must hurt. And then it gets really serious. It's Mainz, Bremen, Düsseldorf, Paderborn, I think, seems to be a foregone conclusion. Oh, yeah. Now, let's move to Serie A. We also saw quite some stuff. Lazio is amazing. I was thinking, shall I wear again a Lazio shirt? It's just, um, you know, I, I want to make mix up. Yes, I'm wearing too many Milan shirts. I understand. I decided, in the end, yeah, let's wear the shirt that made me happiest, as I said before. But... Lazio or Crystal Palace were shirts that I was considering for this video. What Giro Immobile is doing at the moment is just out of this world and no one knows where this is come, coming from. Within 20 minutes, Lazio had a 3-0 lead over a Sampdoria side where everyone said they are consolidated by now. Nope, not for Lazio. It was free scoring. I mean, not only did Immobile um, score... Uh, two goals, from one from a pen penalty, uh, one from a shot. He also assisted the opening goal through Caicedo very nicely. Bastos, and then again Immobile, and with another pen penalty, add more goals. So Immobile scores three. Uh, Linete only late puts a goal back, but Lazio is flying high. Sassuolo gets a two win, one win over Torino. They were one nil down, but then in the end they get over Torino. And Napoli is just one train wreck, wreck at the moment. Um, I don't get it how a really good team, I don't want to say a world class team, but a really good team, with just one stupid action where the owner says, You guys go on Retiro. Angelotti is not happy with that, but goes, the team is uh, protesting against it, and then it all falls apart from that point. There was no need for that. Napoli didn't necessarily have bad results at that point. This was this is so self-made at the moment. Napoli is taking the deep dive in the table. Uh, Chiesa gets a 1-0 for Fiorentina. Napoli, yes, not very lucky. I think Insigne hits the post. They have to chance. They're not even playing bad. They're just not lucky at the moment. And yeah, I'm... Although I value Gattuso for what he did, um, he's not the great coach that Angelotti is, at least yet. And then uh, Vlahovic, I think, makes a wonderful second goal, and Fiorentina gets a 2 0 win. Kind of surprising. Milan Udine, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> that was a roller coaster ride. First half was horrible for Milan. This was the Milan of old. Everything that you said uh, they're doing well, no, they were not doing in this game. Uh, Donnarumma completely mistimed uh, getting uh, running out, 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 out of goal. Uh, fouls a player, but it falls to Striga Larsen, who can put it into the net in the seventh minute. And I think, oh, wow, wow, wow. Uh, and it takes them a lot of time. They cannot hold Lasagna, who is racing up and down, had a, at least one huge chance to make it 2 2 0, at which point I think Milan would have been toast. Milan had their chances. Uh, but not great. Great, great, great was late in the first half. And there was one action where Ibrahimovic gets the ball at midfield, pulls it forward, takes it kind of in the attack at the line for the attacking third again, pulls it forward and runs forward and just cannot co co connect. But if Ibrahimovic needs to get his own, needs to start an attack and finish it at the same time, there's something going wrong. 
Anyway, um, second half, completely different story and Milan is changed. Rebic comes on for Bond Bonaventura and suddenly Milan goes all out, out on tech. And after a Conte exist, assist, Rebic in the 48th makes it 1-1. Rebic, who has done nothing so far, suddenly the hero. Um, and then Milan is playing nicely for especially uh, Castillejo was really... Uh, a, re a revelation. Leao played well. Ibrahimovic was just hang hanging there. I mean, the one thing I see, Ibrahimovic where gets bald, bounces it off and puts on to, to, to the next player. Um, after a corner kick that was only tentatively clear by Udine, who at that point had already another good chance. I mean, they could have made it 2-1. Uh, but I think at that point, the game had sufficiently shifted towards Milan's uh, favor and Hernandez with a great shot low into the corner makes it 2-1 and I'm hoping that they can hang on. No, Kevin Lasagna, this is by Striga Larsen. Again, not marked very, very, very well, but it was a great header. Uh, makes it 2-2 uh, and I'm thinking, yeah, again a draw. Yes, they're not losing, but again a draw. I mean, Udine had then another chance where they probably could have made it 3-2. But then it's Rebic with a nice attack move where he really knows what he must do. He sees that the defenders are all collapsing towards him, even the goalkeeper. There's a uh, there is a free spot, and you can see he knows. I just have to get past the defender and put in a, in a shot, and it is um, a goal, and that's exactly what he makes, and it is uh, three two at the end of the game. Brescia Cagliari was also a very interesting game where Cagliari took the lead, and Torre Grossa turns the game around for Brescia uh, in the 49th. Wonderful goal to make it two one. If you haven't seen it, that's a, a screamer. Um, uh, but um, Joao Pedro, who also scores twice, so twice uh, from a penalty, gets the equalizer. Balotelli comes on and gets sent off because he's uh, gesturing at the referee. Was not very smart. Bologna Hellas won one. Uh, Bologna had most of it for um, for most of the game, but I think a player was sent off that gave uh, Verona a little bit the upper hand. Verona actually playing not that bad this season. Uh, and they get the late e e equalizer, and with some luck, they probably could have gotten even the win. Lecce Inter, I saw a little bit of that, especially the, la the latter stages of the first half, where Inter was stifling Lecce. In the second half, it got a little bit more even, and the Lecce had chances, but I have to say, uh, once Inter took the lead, I switched over to the Hertha Bayern game, because that was still nil-nil. I regretted that because Lecce almost immediately equalized and Inter dropped vital points. So that uh, Inter now twice in a row not winning, it's really, really tough for them. And that is, and those are definitely drop points based on the chances. They were not playing great, but uh, they probably would have deserved the win. Roma with a very weird 3-1 win over Geno. I mean, the first two goals should not have been shots on goal, but it, they ended up in goal. Uh, Genoa can put one back right before the, uh, I think right, right before the half, uh, they pulled one back. Yeah, make, make, make it one, two, but then, uh, Jekko, right when Genoa was really all out getting the equalizer, Jekko converts one and plays it home safe for Roma. And you were also without really, really convincing, but Ronaldo being in great form. He scores twice the first one of the butt of a Parma player. Parma can equalize, but, Right, that was just an invitation for Ronaldo to be the hero again. And remember when at the beginning of December I said, what's wrong with Ronaldo? He might be out of it unless there's an injury. It must have been an injury because he's sensational since the beginning of December. Absolutely, absolutely sensational. And then the big stunner, and the reason why I do this video now and not yesterday, Atalanta against Pal. I saw the first 15, 20, 20 minutes and Atalanta was Atalanta. Really playing forward, uh, putting lots of pressure on Spal and getting a um, lead through Ilicic. Duvan Zapata should have made a few more goals. But once I saw the highlights in the second half, the game started to turn. And Petani, who already had a good chance at the end of the first half, gets the equalizer from Atalanta player of all places. Really nicely played counter-attack. And then six minutes later, Valotti <laughs> takes a shot and it's 2-1 Spal, the worst team in the league. Beat Atalanta, who are flying high. Yes, they lost during the week in the cup, but still. And Spal hangs on. Might this be now the 
Dreary Spell of Atalanta. They had a similar one uh, in the early, in the winter last season, but then they clawed themselves back in. So let's see how it goes. All this means is that the gap widens. Juventus has now a four-point lead over Inter. Could this be decisive? Well, we have to see what Lazio does in their game in hand against Verona, because they could be within three points of Juventus. Although, I'm still a little bit wary about Lazio. They play sensational, but I'm not sure if they can keep it up this high pace. Uh, it would be great to have a, a challenge of Lazio in there. And maybe Inter can also get back into it, but at the moment it's all again set for Juventus. Roma uh, gets a little bit sigh of relief. Um, because Atalanta is losing, so they go in fourth place, but now it's a derby against Lazio, so that's not going to be nice. Cagliari finally get points again, but yeah, uh, we see Parma. Milan is now kind of in touch with Cagliari, so you can smell the European spots, because 5, 5 and 6 will probably be your European spots. Uh, Torino draw, dropping a little, little bit off. Napoli only in 11th place. Uh, very tight here with Bologna, Fiorentina and Udine. If we look now relegation, yeah, Lecce, Spal, Brescia, Genoa. <laughs> Spal with that win takes it up. They're still not out of the relegation zone, but they have a chance. Now, no Liga this week, so let's go straight to a now rather short Liga Nosh. Um, where on Friday we had two big games, as I said in the What to Watch video. Braga wins at Porto 2 1, which again opens the space for Benfica, who uh, were. Probably a little bit better in the first half, but Sporting really took it then to them. And at that moment they score and they get a 2-0 win uh, to seal the deal. And so um, we also had another result um, from Malikao only playing 1-1 one -one at Maratimo. So Benfica separating themselves from the pack. 48 now, 41 Porto, Famalicao 31 Sporting only 20, 29 Braga. So it's pretty clear that this is Benfica's league to lose. Belgium restarted and there we had the big uh, game between Anderlecht and uh, Club Rouge. Yes, Anderlecht is not very good this season, but it's a classic. Anderlecht had the league, but Bruges turns around, wins 2-1, remain very comfortably top of the table with the game in hand still. So that's in addition. Standard um, beats Mechelen, uh, who else Ghent uh, against Real Excelsior. Also wins, uh, and I want to see Antwerp beats Circle Bruges uh, as well. So we have now in the table Club Bruges 10 points ahead of Ghent, Antwerp 42. And yeah, it's relatively close there, but Club Bruges is again the class of the league. Um, also, a remarkable result in the Netherlands where Alkmaar loses at home to Willem Dwey. They have been losing now twice in a row. Uh, 3 1. Feyenoord beats Herentveen 3-1, uh, a uh, big game between Zwolle and Utrecht, but most, most importantly Venlo and PSV only 1-1 one, one, and it's all set up for Ajax who get a kind of a messy 2-1 win over Sparta Rotterdam. In the table, Ajax now 6 points ahead of Alkmaar again, Willem Dwey is hanging in there, PSV also only in 4th spot and Feyenoord in there, so maybe it gets a little bit closer uh, there in the Netherlands as well, uh, but it's for spots 2-6, two, two, but the champions, I think it will be Ajax, safe to say. Um, results in Turkey, because we were talking about it, Sivaspor beats Besiktas 2-1, that was the big game, Sivaspor stays top, Bajakci also gets a little 4-1 uh, over Yeni Malataya, and yeah, Trabzonspor with a big win over Kasim Pasta, the big guys. Galatasaray against the Nislispor 2-1 and Fenerbahce 2-0 at Gaziantep. So Sivaspor stays top four points ahead uh, ahead of Bajakshi here. So kind of a surprising table in Turkey. And last but not least, we go to Greece, where the battle continues. Pauk beats Tripolis 3-1. Olympiakos beats Aris 4-2. The two remain on top. Ike um, beats Larissa, also stays in there. Parathinaikos is coming up with a 1-0 win over Xanti. So we have now Olympiakos still only a point over uh, a lead of over Pauk. And then there's the gap. Ike looks safe in third. Parathinaikos and OFI and Aris, Atromitos, Xanti. It's a kind of a broad midfield, but those might uh, joust for European spots as well. Pooh, long video, long video, lots to 
uh, talk about this week. Uh, many games, many exciting games. Let me know if you agree with what I saw. Let me drop a comment below if you want to add anything to what I've been telling here. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.